Hello, amazing artists. I am so excited to show you how to start this birch tree project. And what we're gonna do today is just paint the sky, this background that you see. And I'm even gonna show you how we make these amazing ice crystals that you see in the sky. It is so cool. And it adds a little science in there too. So how great is that? I have another example right here. And what I have to do right now is I have to make a choice. What color am I going to make my picture? Am I gonna go with cool colors or am I gonna go with the warm colors? I'm actually gonna go with the cool colors today. So when I think about cool colors and the colors that I need, I look at the color wheel. And so the color wheel tells me if I'm thinking about the sun, the sun color is the color I'm gonna start with, whether I was using warm or if I was using cool. I'm gonna be going this direction. So this tells me the order that my colors are going to be. Starting at the bottom, I'll be using the yellow. Then I'll go to this yellowish green, green, bluish green into the blue. I don't know if I'll get to the purple. I think I'm just going to fill from green to blue, one primary to another. All right, so let's get started. For this project, I'm using a piece of 12 by 18 tag board. It's a little bit thicker paper and it's great. It takes paint really well. And I'm using a bigger brush, a really nice big brush. My brush just happens to say number 10 on it right here. So I know this is a really big brush for me to use to get over wide areas. I've also got my paints and we have to think about which paints we're gonna activate. Activating your paints means that you're just putting some water in there to get your paint started, moistened, so it's gonna work. I can just use yellow and blue if I want, or I could go into some green. Because if I just use yellow and blue, that means yeah, I'm just activating the colors that I can use to make a green. But I really like the paints in here. So we'll see what they look like when I use them. I'll make some artist decisions along the way and decide if I keep going with a color or not based on how I'm feeling like it works with my project. All right, so I activated those colors. Again, the ones that we saw on the color wheel that we knew were going to work the project. And I'm going to use a wet on wet technique. So that means that I'm gonna wet my paper first and then it's going to, there we go. Sorry, a little adjustment there. And then it's gonna be wet paint on wet paper. So it doesn't just, the paper doesn't just absorb all of my paint. So I put a really nice coating of just clean water at the bottom of my paper like that. And it might start to bend a little, that's okay. So here we go. Starting at the bottom and then I work up. What I'm doing is I'm filling in the paper. The paper's like a sponge and the paper wants to absorb water. If I give it some water to start with, then it takes that water, it holds on to it, but other water that comes later in the form of our paint doesn't absorb so fast into the paper and it has a chance to sit on top. And we like it to sit on top because that means then we can move it around. It doesn't just stick right where you put it and then not move around anymore. Okay, so I think I've got a lot of water on there. It doesn't matter if I've missed some spots. It's okay, because water's coming with the paint. Let's begin with the paint. All right, I've got my nice yellow right here. I put a lot of water in there and I have some water on my paper. So I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna add water once I've put some paint on my paper. I don't go back to the oval I keep using the paint that's on the paper right here. There's plenty here. Now, go back, take a little bit more. It doesn't look like much, but watercolor paints are great. They really do want to move around. You just have to help them. Just give them some water to move around. That keeps them moving. Okay, it's looking good. Let's go to our next color. I'm gonna go to that yellowish green I saw earlier and I'm gonna put that right on top, always going in back and forth streaky lines. 
like that. You see that? Okay, you can add a little water to that, or not if you like the streaks. You might wanna keep it. All right, I'm gonna see what these greens look like now. Here is a green. Okay, I like this. All right, get that going in there. We just gotta add a little bit more. I do want it to be a nice dark color. So I add some water to my paper. Remember, you're adding water to the paper. Get all the way to your edges. Don't leave these undone in white. That will look really funny later, won't it? All right, add some more in there. Sometimes it's good not to blend everything in together. That way you end up with some variety and some interest. You don't want everything to look flat. You wanna have light and dark areas. All right, you can see I just added another green. some water and spread that around. You're always layering and adding one on top of the other. And always going back and forth. Okay, we're getting there. Time to look at this blue. Here we go. We want it to be a nice blend from one color into the next. So adding water and going up and down. Do you see my hand going up and down? So I go up, I come back down. I go back up, always going back and forth, sweeping with my brush. Up and down, up and down. All right, I'm gonna move this down a little bit so you can see. Oh, you can already see, okay. I'm gonna add a little bit more water up here because it started to dry. You know, it took me a little while to get up here. That's okay, get these edges, don't leave anything white. I'm gonna go into my last color here. That is a nice rich blue. Yeah, I like it. If you got to this point and you wanted to make it darker, don't add black. You don't wanna do that. If you have a darker blue or something in your paints, you can add that. I have one that's a little bit darker. It's kind of an indigo right here, so I've got it a little bit purple, it's a little bit blue. So I just made an artist decision, I decided, yep, I needed to add a little bit in there to give it the idea and impression that this is twilight sky just starting to turn into night up here. I want it to be nice and dark, but not too dark. You know, watercolors aren't about like coating the whole piece of paper. It's about giving the idea of the color. Trust me, when this dries, it's gonna look beautiful. For my next step, I am gonna take this very beautiful painted picture right here with these colors on it and give it a little bit more water, just a little bit. And while this paint is still nice and wet, I am going to add some salt. Salt is going to absorb the color that's on the paper. It'll soak it up into its little crystals and leave a crystally white spot where I have dropped it. It will dry on this paper and when you pick up your paper, you're going to drop salt everywhere. So do not pick up your paper until you are completely ready to scrape it off into a garbage can later, because this can make a big mess. You don't have to do this step if you don't want to, and you certainly don't have to use a lot of salt. But if you like the idea of making these crystals, you can use some salt from your house to do that. You could even use a salt shaker but don't shake out too much. A good artist knows that just a little bit and a, or a measured amount is better than just going crazy and making a mess. All right, have fun, let it dry. And remember, when you pick it up, you will drop salt on the floor. So make sure when you pick it up, you have a garbage can right next to you so you're ready to scrape it all off into the garbage can. You could use a paper towel to wipe it off into the garbage can, only when this is dry, of course, not now. It doesn't work until it's had a chance to dry. And then you'll see the salt crystals left behind.